Good morning, a very warm welcome to St Mary's Beverly for our service this morning. It is great to be able to worship with you and today we're thinking about the potential of prayer. And so, rightly, we begin with our opening prayer. We come to you, Lord, ready to worship, ready to learn, ready for prayer, ready for action. May our worship here spill into our everyday lives. Amen. And so as we come before God in stillness, we come before God in confession. Forgive us, gracious Lord, when we have turned away from you and been distracted by ourselves and our own needs. Forgive us when we have sought to belong to the world and not to your truth. When we've fallen out with one another, we have shown the world that we are not united as we should be. Forgive us, O Lord, and protect us and keep us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
And so may we know the power of your forgiveness in our risen life as we, we, we recall Jesus' death and resurrection. Amen. The first reading is taken from Acts 1, verses 15 to 17. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120, and said, Brothers and sisters, the scripture had to be fulfilled in which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through David concerning Judas, who served as guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number, and shared in our ministry. Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus was living among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So they nominated two men, Joseph, called Barsabbas, also known as Justus, and Matthias. Then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go where he belongs. Then they cast lots, and the lot fell to Matthias. So he was added to the eleven apostles. Here endeth the lesson. The reading comes from John 17, paragraph 6 to 19, that Jesus prays for his disciples. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they have accepted them. They know with certainty that I came from you, and they believe that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer. But they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by the name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction, so that the scripture will be fulfilled. I am coming to you now. But I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them. For they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. And you have sent me into the world. I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be sanctified. Amen. Shall we pray? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Every now and again we hear of very sad stories, stories where a mother has left her children behind, perhaps going away on holiday or going on a shopping trip, and the authorities have found them and had to intervene. And it seems to me that it would have been very different, of course, if that mother had had her own parents, perhaps, loving grandma or 
grandfather who was able to step in and help with the children when she needed to do something else. Now don't think for one minute I'm condoning leaving children behind, of course I'm not. But wouldn't it be different if she'd had somebody that she could rely on to take care of her children during that time? Presumably things might have been different, perhaps not. But we can only hope and pray that each of us have the support and love that we need when those who are closest to us are not available, not around. And Jesus is preparing for the time when he will no longer be around physically present for his disciples. And so he prays for them. He places them in God's care, reminding them that life is going to be tough. It's going to be difficult. They're going to face challenges. And so he asks God to care for them. I pray for them, he says. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are mine. Jesus prays for us as if we are his own children, and he places us in God's care, in God's protection. It might seem odd, this needing care and protection, but of course the early Christians were facing huge trials, huge possibilities that they might be arrested or tried or come under persecution. Indeed, there are many Christians in the world who still face those kind of difficulties. And so Jesus prays for God's protection and care over them during the difficult times. He's not saying that we no longer belong to the world and no longer part of his wonderful and amazing creation. In John's Gospel here, when he talks about not being part of the world. He's talking about not being distracted by the things that separate us from God, not being caught up in the things that take us away for God's plans and purposes for our lives. And so he prays for God's protection over them. He prays for them that God will keep them safe. He prays, Holy Father, Protect them by your power, by the power of your name, the name you gave to me, so they may be one as we are one. Not only is he praying for their safe care and protection, he's also praying that they might belong to each other and form a strong and loving community that they might not fall out or bicker. You can imagine a scenario where a parent is knowing that they're going to leave their children behind and not only offers them to the, to the protection of somebody who can intervene and care for them, but also prays that they might get along with each other, not fall out, not bicker, not hurt one another. And Jesus prays this for his disciples, that they might remain a source of comfort and care for one another. That we as Christians might support and care for one another. What a prayer. It's a prayer of placing us in God's care, but also placing us in the care of one another. Of course, when we hear this prayer, we know that too often we still manage to fall out. There are still different denominations, different ways of doing things, factions and divisions within our church that grieve God and grieve us. And so Jesus prays that God will protect and keep his family in unity. Indeed, it's something that many of us pray. We pray for our God's protection over each other. It's what our church leaders do. They pray for us. They pray that God will be with us, that God will bless us, and that we might be united as one family. 
certainly what I pray for our church here at St Mary's. And it's a reminder of the power and importance of prayer. For if we're to live in a world where there is injustice or where there is distractions, where people can get hurt, where people don't love each other and care for one another, we need all the prayer we can get. Many of us pray for our own families, for our children, that God will protect them and keep them, that God will make his face to shine upon them and be gracious to them. And we teach our children to pray as well. Praying, talking to God, asking God to be with us is one of the most profound things that we can do that shows our care for one another. Placing those we love in the care of our Heavenly Father is the most extraordinary gift. And so today and this week as we continue thinking about prayer and connecting in with Thy Kingdom Come, Church of England's initiative for prayer for one another, let us remember its importance. Let us take a moment, if we don't, just to pray for somebody that we love and care for. Or perhaps to pray for somebody we don't even know yet. Or to pray for somebody that we find it difficult to get along with. And to place them in God's care. That he might be a loving parent to them. Caring for them and protecting them. And holding us together as one family. Amen. Archbishop Tarbo is one of my heroes in the Anglican uh, Communion. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. it is. <laughs> I'm not going to stop that. Um, he, he is Archbishop of Southern Africa. He's uh, the latest in an extraordinary line of Archbishops, yeah. including Desmond Tutu and others, and um, has stood up for human rights, for the dignity of the human being, in the most remarkable way and led a church that I have found to be full of love and welcome. And Your Grace, when we pray in the Lord's Prayer or in this week between Ascension and Pentecost, Thy Kingdom come or Your Kingdom come or whatever you say in Zulu or Koza or whatever else, what in your mind is what what you're envisaging, what, what happens? Your Grace, thank you very much. Uh, you know, when we pray, thy kingdom come, uh, I'm, I'm full of excitement. Uh, I, I feel almost like uh, ta Tabo, it's, it's not about you, it's not about the church even. Uh, but it's about really trying to discern with others the voice of God uh, in South Africa. And when I'm tempted to say, oh my goodness, uh, I'm being clobbered left, right and center for <laughs> criticizing our, our government of the day. And then we say, thy kingdom come. I say, hey, wait, wait. Yes, of course, I'm not seeking. Uh, the kingdom of uh, the political leadership. I'm not seeking the kingdom of the wealth creators. I'm seeking God's kingdom. And so I, I really feel relieved that I'm participating uh, in God's mission and uh, and His will, uh, you know, I just chuckle. I mean, his will will be done through this uh, uh, tiny uh, South African tucked in somewhere in Cape Town and uh, a number of God's people. So there's a relief and uh, there's a sense that I am part of a bigger, bigger prayer set by not only myself but God's people. And 
I mean, that is such an exciting answer. If I use a word that has resonances in an extraordinary way in South Africa, perhaps as much as many, almost all countries in the world, which is the word liberate. If I, when I was listening to you just then, the word that came to mind was, when we pray thy kingdom come, it liberates you from self-obsession and it liberates you for the service of God. Is, is that, does that make sense? It's, it's, it's really apt because I feel liberated. I feel uh, energized. I feel like, hey, my, my struggles are pale compared to you know, praying that God's kingdom, God's rule should envelope this or that particular situation. Mm. You, you know, sometimes uh, when I do the off offices alone, uh, there's another chorus that comes, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Mm. And, um, and, and all, almost like all uh, the answers will be given unto you. And not all the answers about maybe the material or the immediate, but uh, all God's people will be put together so that God's will and mission uh, will be realized and uh, all people will be given uh, hope to transcend their daily uh, challenges. There could be food in our context. It could be water in Cape Town at, mo at the moment. Uh, it could be inequality, it could be environmental uh, uh, issues. Mm. I think that's, um, it's an extraordinary thing. I love that word transcend that you just used. I think you and I both know with your huge role in the Anglican Communion as well as in the church in Southern Africa that we both spend so much time enveloped in issues of structures or programs or budgets or strategies and then this transcends it takes us just completely out of it exactly exactly it takes you into uh, another realm that uh, yes the budget the structures are important but there is something uh, bigger than those budget and and each time I focus on the budget and the structure you know my energy just goes <laughs> 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 but when I say, to what end, to what end, Lord, this is your messy church, please help. Uh, you, you know, it takes me outside of that. And I said, oh, yeah, it is, it is his kingdom manifesting itself in the small detail of the budget, the structure, but always taking me to a higher level to say, hey, you're not alone. Uh, this is a God of providence because later thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Wow, enormous responsibility, but a joy to participate. And if I go back, finally, to something a long time ago in your own life, say in the 80s, when the situation in Southern Africa before the end of apartheid was very, very different. Can you give an example of where this prayer, Thy Kingdom Come, you felt this did you began to see your the difficulties being transcended, the liberation? Uh, you know, at a personal level, I mean, I remember at the age of sixteen, uh, being chased by a, a, a van or this police uh, armored uh, car, uh, wearing uniform because we are protesting against uh, Africans as a medium of instruction and this. Armored car was really come at me. I walked fast, it drove fast. I walked slow, it drove fast. And then I ran away and I hid myself under uh, the, uh, a car where the mechanic was fixing it uh, on that particular street. And I said to him, they want to kill me. And then he came out and they said to him, where's the terrorist? And the mechanic came, I won't repeat uh, what he said, I mean, he was very crude, but he said, you guys are looking for a terrorist uh, from a young schoolboy. There are terrorists out there, why don't you get a terrorist? And I prayed there and said, Lord, I'm in your hand, because I mean, they could have just clobbered the mechanic at me. And then 
uh, they left. And it was during when a number of my colleagues were killed in 1976. So, I mean, I, I felt it at that personal level that indeed, uh, I felt his rule, I felt his hand. And generally in South Africa, uh, we prayed, uh, we lamented, we cried, and we saw uh, democracy come not with uh, too much blood because we thought now we're going to fight for our liberation, but the churches, the mosques, the shoes and others came together and, and we prayed. And as Christians, we're in the forefront saying, Lord, let thy kingdom come. And there we are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thy kingdom come, Lord, teach us how to pray for all to know your joy, your peace and love, and know your friendship each and every day, the breath of Christ the Father.
Let us pray. Loving God, our Heavenly Father, your greatest wish is that we would spend time with you in prayer for others and for ourselves. When we are not sure what to say, help us to speak to you in simple words. We thank you for the enduring prayer of Jesus, which reassures and reminds us that we are not alone, but always protected, empowered, forgiven and surrounded by your grace. Strengthen our faith, Lord, and help us to be good witnesses of your love to our friends, family and neighbours. Show us ways to reach out to help those who are in need of prayer and peace. Grant us the courage and the opportunities to make a positive difference within our community. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Increase our compassion, Lord, and help us to faithfully persevere and not grow weary in our prayers for the world. We thank you that your word never returns empty and every prayer is heard. We continue to pray for your blessing of peace, healing and hope for our global family as we lift before you the devastation caused by the ravages of Covid. the terrible trauma and consequences caused by war, the severe difficulties of never-ending cycles of famine and drought, the long-lasting pain of oppression and injustice. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As we share in the privilege of prayer, we give thanks and praise for the power and protection of the name of Jesus and the wisdom and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Mighty God, you are the energy of all our doing and the peace of all our resting. Amen. So we come to our news and notices. Firstly, we'd like to remind you of the concerts that are happening at lunchtime here at St Mary's Church. Now, it is open. We will be open to visitors. Now, you're very welcome to come and hear Libby play, a beautiful pianist, um, at lunchtime during this week. Also, to remind you that if you signed up for the Bible course, we are collating those numbers and putting them together so we can meet in the church hall as soon as that is allowed. Um, and just working out the best way to do that. So don't think we've forgotten about that. Also, a big thank you to those who have served on PCC uh, in the last year, and also for our church wardens who have served, including David Warren and those who've stepped up this year. Your church wardens for this year will be Jill Edmund, Jill Gregory, Beverly Lawrence, and Keith Gilson. And we, we're very grateful to them for their support and love and care as we look after our uh, beautiful church community and indeed church building. Also, you might want to just take a look over the APCM report again. Unfortunately, there was a slight technical issue and some of the pages were missing. We're really sorry about that, but they have been corrected uh, and you can download that from our website or it will be on the news sheet that has gone out to you as well. I also want to say a big thank you to those who've helped clean church, make it look sparkly and beautiful, uh, ready for visitors. Thank you so much for your time. We really, really appreciate that. We are very grateful to you indeed. So we come to our final hymn.
And so we come to the end of our time of worship together and we pray. As we come to the end of worship, may our prayers be just the beginning. May our worship, our time here, what we have learnt and what we have discovered, lead us into action and lives full of worship every hour of every day. We ask this in Jesus' name, whose whole life was an offering of worship to you. Amen. <laughs>